Warning, listening to the following podcast may cause your pharmacy to experience extreme success. Common side effects include of listening to this podcast are greater knowledge, improved performance, and higher revenue. This is the Pharmacy Podcast Network's coverage of the McKesson Idea Share 2017, recorded live from the Ernest Morial Convention Center in New Orleans, sponsored by the McKesson Pharmacy Technology and Services Division, MPTS. McKesson Pharmacy Technology and Services provides pharmacy owners the technology infrastructure to manage, grow, and compete at a national level while serving their local communities with the best healthcare services. Be sure to listen to this special 12 podcast series dedicated to the empowerment and success of community pharmacy businesses across the country. And now, here's your host of the Pharmacy Podcast Network, Todd Yuri. My name is Adrienne Cervone with Beaver Health Mart Pharmacy, and you're listening to the Pharmacy Podcast. Hello, everyone. My name is Jamie Grams with McKesson Pharmacy Systems. And I have the pleasure of spending a little bit of time with one of our great customers, Adrian Cervone from Beaver Health Mart. I'm the Vice President for Product Management at McKesson Pharmacy Systems, and uh, Adrian is one of our customers in uh, Beaver, Pennsylvania, that uses our PharmaServe Pharmacy Management System. So Adrian, um, we've been working together for quite some time now. Uh, I look back at how we actually uh, met each other uh, it seemed like it was a pretty cool coincidence uh, based on the feedback that you provided to uh, one of our surveys. Can you talk about, you know, um, what it was, like how that happened, like when you reached out to us and provided some feedback? Can you tell that story a little bit? Oh, absolutely. I really think that timing is everything. And after being with McKesson for 10 years, I get this customer survey that came out and asked really specific questions about where the pharmacy system was going and what was needed and where the downfalls were, the short shortcomings. And I took some time and I filled out this survey and I was honest. I held nothing back. And I talked about clinical pharmacy services that were needed and um, where I, I envisioned the profession going and what I needed from McKesson and what was missing. And then you walked in the door a couple months later and it was timing was everything. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. We were uh, soliciting feedback from all of our customers to try and understand, you know, where we should really prioritize uh, the areas that we were going to improve. And, and you had some very, very specific feedback, which was awesome for us. Uh, the, the need to introduce integrated MedSync and PharmaServe, the need to, to provide technology to, to help manage clinical services, uh, to help identify patients that are non-adherent and, and to help uh, improve that adherence. Um, so th- that kind of started our uh, introduction and our relationship. And uh, ever since that visit, um, you know, we've been working closely together to, to pilot and the beta uh, some of the improvements we've been making and, and really leveraging Adrian's feedback. So um, one of the things that really impressed me, Adrian, is your passion for pharmacy, your passion for your patients, and for your community. So can you just tell us, talk a little bit about the, the community of Beaver and the customers you serve? Beaver is a small town. There's about 4,500 people who live right, right in Beaver. And it's one of those places that you don't really even believe exist until you're standing there. We have brick sidewalks and the whole street is just mom and pop shops. And I fell in love with the town as soon as I drove in and knew that we that was the perfect place for a pharmacy, an independent pharmacy. So we take care of about 1,500 patients um, and it's growing, steadily growing. And it's just the, the happiest little town that supports all of those businesses, which is why it's the way that it is. Yeah, another thing that's really cool is how active you guys are with your community in terms of like some of the different events to support your community. Um, I was wondering if you could uh, talk a little bit about you know, why did you want to go into pharmacy and to become a, a community pharmacist and at the end of the day eventually end up owning your, your own store. Can you talk a little bit about that? I didn't know right away where I was going to end up. Um, Whenever I was old enough to get a job, I lived in such a small town that it was either pizza shop or pharmacy. And I chose to work in the pharmacy because it was really hot in the pizza shop. And I... When I walked in the pharmacy, of course, you start with lottery and selling cigarettes, <laughs> which isn't that common anymore, but they pulled me back into the pharmacy right away, and I loved it. I loved patient interaction. I loved that the pharmacist could look at the patient and know what the answer was without even pulling a profile, because it's that is what independent pharmacy is, and at that point, I knew that I had to stay in. I had to chase it, and... Because I had that opportunity to see the pharmacy owner 
and that interaction that is where my heart went immediately and I went all through pharmacy school wanting to be an owner and it's pharmacy school really doesn't talk about ownership they talk more about clinical side and working in hospitals and and even in chains but ownership is just not something that is talked about so I I just had to keep my ears open and I was even working at a chain at that point but I had to just stay with it and um, and trust that something was going to happen so, so um, you've been doing this for quite some time um, and, and you mentioned community pharmacy so why is community pharmacy so important to your community and to the patients I love taking care of the patients and fixing whatever problem they bring to me even if it's just something like a bug bite um, to be the face of the community uh, I, I can't even walk in the coffee shop without getting questions about oh my prescription insurance is going to change uh, which which way should I go is this something that's gonna work for me or uh, my doctor just gave me samples of a medicine and I cringe because they didn't run it past the pharmacist yet and so yes I'm I have their profile memorized because that's what we do and you know they want to know right away if that's the right drug or not for them but that is what I love and I love being part of the community in that way very cool and um, you started working in the store that you're at today but then you eventually became the owner so how did that work out well when we first started this store I had an opportunity uh, my former partner had always wanted to open his own store and he knew that he was going to need somebody to run it because he had other things going on where he wasn't going to be able to to run the store full-time so we entered into a junior partnership I was fresh out of pharmacy school but like I said I made it known that ownership and independent pharmacy was my passion and so we actually met through my alma mater which is University of Pittsburgh and uh, we started the junior partnership with um, pretty specific plans of how we would transition into a future ownership which looking back I was a baby at the time and I didn't think it would ever happen but um, the stars aligned and the time came and we both knew that it was time to make that happen and it's been about two years that I'm full owner. Very cool congratulations and um, you've been working with McKesson for a long time what has your experience been with McKesson as your technology provider? I have always been so impressed with the way that McKesson is able to fix any problems but look forward to see what's coming and to communicate that with us, with the, with the customer. So I've had great experience with McKesson. I've only ever been with McKesson for the last 10 years. And then uh, can you talk a little bit about the types of solutions that you're using from McKesson Pharmacy Systems? Right now, I am with PharmaServe, um, PharmaServe from the beginning. I have Navigator. I actually was part of the beta testing with Navigator, and um, I can't say enough good things about Navigator. It's my favorite part of it. I've taken on uh, CPS about a year and a half ago, and I started with APS more recently. Um, we are using MedSync daily, and I've got to say MedSync is one of the coolest updates because it's actually integrated the sync process into the pharmacy system which full disclosure i tried to do med sync on my own but it took four pieces of technology and i failed miserably to the point where i stopped offering med sync until mckesson had the solution so um, I'm, I'm using that religiously and my staff loved it i was able to teach them that within 10 minutes and they did it on their own so for other pharmacy customers that are out there that might be using a, a separate solution for MedSync or a manual process, would you recommend that they try out and utilize the integrated MedSync? Oh, absolutely. There is no need anymore to have that uh, backup to your backup with your old way of doing MedSync. Um, we, we don't need an outside process anymore. We don't have to track it through a repeating calendar. Um, it's all built in and it's right in the patient's profile. You can access it a, a couple different ways and to be able to open up the sync calendar and see what your week looks like or the week that you want to take vacation. You know how to schedule your staff around your sync patients. So I gotta say, McKesson hit it.
Oh, very cool. Thanks for all the feedback that you provided in helping us to design that. Um, what does your pharmacy, your, your team members, what do they like about PharmaServe? They like how easy it is to use and figure out what they're looking for. I actually have a lot of students that, um, that rotate through on rotation with me, pharmacy students. And what's really cool is they'll start on a Monday. I kind of give them the bird's eye overview. Tuesday, I let them run it and kind of explore by themselves. And by Wednesday, they don't need me anymore. So it's very user friendly. Very cool. And then you mentioned a, a couple other solutions as well with CPS, our clinical program solution. Uh, you started early on uh, when we first made that available to our pharmacist customers, and you've been working with us to provide feedback and to, to create programs. Can you talk about the, the, the program that you implemented within CPS and what it does for you and your patients? From the beginning, I realized that I was going to have to somehow figure out how to get adherence numbers up. And the, the, in my mind, the easiest target is our diabetics because Equip wants us to make sure that we're looking at our diabetic to make sure that they're on a statin. We want to make sure that they're compliant with their diabetes medication. They fall into the RASA group, so we want to make sure they're compliant with that blood pressure medicine and, um, and, and compliant with the, with the cholesterol medicine. So we've got four ways to touch one patient to, to make sure that our equip goals are where they should be. So it was a no-brainer for us with CPS. We wanted a program that could easily, quickly identify the patient, that diabetic patient, when they're standing in front of us in the store. And that's the program that we created. That's great. So do you think that the ability to identify these uh, clinical service opportunities or adherence issues in workflow is, is key to, to making an impact? Oh, it's totally key because, again, I tried to do it paper and pencil and make a list and catch the patient when they're in the store to talk about the, the um, fact if they're on a statin or not or if they're adherent with their medicine. I tried that and that's where this customer survey, survey came into play. Um, I said, listen, there's got to be something that shows me who these patients are when they're standing in the store, not an afterthought, because, you know, those really important patients that you want to focus on, they're going to walk in the store on a Monday before a holiday, and that is the last thing that you're thinking about. Can you talk a little bit about what you're using and, and how you go about identifying your patients that are non-adherent and trying to improve those star measures? Well, I started using APS, and... I was so impressed because before APS, I was just trying to use Equip as best as possible. But as we all know, Equip, when it first started, there was no information on patients who were not adherent. All you had was this number, this looming number. And how are we supposed to take Equip seriously when they don't give us the patients who are, are, are hitting so that we can talk to them and sit down with them and, and figure out what the problem is and offer them these solutions? So. Again, I brought that up and McKesson listened and told me about the program APS. So we started with that. We're, it hasn't been long that we've been with it, but it's great because it allows you real-time solution to seeing those patients where they're at with their adherence. So you kind of have an idea of who to focus on. You're not going to grab that person who's 30% adherence and pull your hair out to try to get them to 100%. You know, that that would be great to do, but let's start off with something a little bit more manageable. So it's really nice to, to have not just the yes, no, this person is or is not adherent, but find out where they actually are on the scale so that you can help them out a little bit. And that's what we've been doing. We've been filtering out that way. And also one of the, my favorite part is the doctor filter. So you're able to filter by doctor and find out who their patients are, find out how adherent they are. So now you have real numbers that you can actually approach your physicians with to say, hey, you're writing the medicine, but guess what? They're not taking it and I have the proof. So, you know, that kind of opens the window to um, these sit downs with the physicians to give them real numbers to say, hey, we've got to work together on this. So you work closely with a lot of the prescribers uh, that you're serving. Can you talk a little bit about the different types of clinical services that you guys offer? Sure. Um, so aside from the, the MedSync, we actually were syncing before MedSync was a thing. We offer adherence packaging, which 
ultimately you have to sink all of the medication. And uh, it was a very manual process in the beginning, but we do offer this compliance packaging and it was so well accepted that word spreads in a small town and we were able to um, kind of get that word out to the, the sons and daughters of our patients who were have, they're struggling living on their own, but they don't want to enter into an assisted living home or they don't want to go into a high rise. Um, they want to just live on their own in their ho in their homes. So it's funny how things work out. We actually get a lot of their children in our store, especially on holidays. So I have to stay well staffed on holidays for this reason. But um, but that's where we set up a lot of our compliance packaging for them. So we do a lot of that. Um, we offer immunizations, that is our main niche in our store, um, not just routine immunizations, but we've started a lot of travel vaccines. So we've got some really cool clinical things going on in the store, but we, we also do a lot of free home delivery because we've got an older population. So I think the home delivery definitely put us on the map because um, from where we are, we've got four chain pharmacies within a one mile radius. So we've kind of hold our own. Very cool. And then when you're when you're offering these services to your patients, um, what are some of the pushback or challenges that you have there? And then how do you go about uh, explaining the value and getting their willingness to commit uh, to, to MedSync and compliance packaging? You have to be creative. So when we we can absolutely see who needs help with compliance packaging, but the first thing that they do, they're very hesitant because they think that they are. Um, they, every single one of them says, I'm not ready for that. I don't need that. And we say, why Why do you not want this free help? We're going to do it for you. You have more time to go gamble. And so we kind of tailor our conversation to the specific patient. And so if we know that we've got our gamblers that are coming into the pharmacy, I'll pull out the packaging. We've got some packaging prepped with some candy in it just to show them for the demo. And we'll kind of peel it off so that they can see how they can take their their day's medicine with them to the casino and they they jump into it they love it so it's just in about the, pres the presentation but there definitely is that initial hesitancy that comes from them because they think that well I'm just not old enough for that so you have to be creative that's awesome and then you, you know you've been doing immunizations for quite some time you, you're very successful with your travel vaccination business could you talk a little bit about immunizations and maybe what community pharmacies could or should be doing Definitely, there are so many opportunities for vaccines, and of course it's state specific. Not every state allows pharmacists to administer every single vaccine that's out there, but even the routine vaccines that are um, allowed to be administered, people forget about it. You know, you're, you make sure that your kids are all up to date, you make sure that your dog is up to date, but when was your last tetanus shot? Um, it's just something that people overlook. And so there's so many opportunities for not only tetanus shot and of course flu shots, but even in the older population like we have in Beaver, we've got shingle shot, yearly flu shot, we've got pneumonia shots, and, and recently the pneumonia guidelines have changed. So now we're seeing our patient more than just one and done. So there's many opportunities. Um, in Pennsylvania, there's been some changes with the the children and what their requirements are to get back into school for this upcoming school year. So we've we've given more polio shots in the last two weeks than I think we have in five years. So we always have to keep our ears open and see what's happening right now. And then um, as far as best practices go, I think you have quite a few. If you were going to share some of them with uh, the listeners on this particular podcast, you know, what are some of the things that you'd recommend? Immunizations seem like they're very overwhelming, and there is a lot that goes into it. But if you break it down and just take it step by step, it's it's a it's a process that you just have to form your to do list and get it done. So you got to know your state law. You have to realize who you're allowed to to administer to, which age group, which vaccines. Find a doctor that you're really comfortable or use HealthMart solutions if you're a HealthMart pharmacy and get your collaborative practice for your state going. Um, but read every line and make sure that you can fulfill everything that is required of you. And just start small. Start with one vaccine. Learn it inside and out. Find out who your rep is. Invite them into your store. They will give you the information that you need. They will keep you on top of, of 
any contraindications that have come down, any um, interactions between vaccines themselves that are new or just discovered. Make sure that you know who you can give it to and who you cannot give it to. And when it comes to actually giving the shots, offer walk-ins. If you're just doing one vaccine, offer walk-ins. It means so much to talk to a doctor's office and say, hey, I'm going to open up the vaccines. I'm going to start doing shingles at my store. Send them down. Send them straight from your office down to me, and I'll take care of them that day. Um, I get a lot of questions about reimbursement. So before you actually order in that first box of vaccines, run some test claims. You know what your main insurances are. So choose some patients and run your test claims. Find out what those co-pays are so that you have an idea of what you're offering. The last thing that a patient wants to hear is that it's $250 and the doctor just told them it's free, so you've just gone and burst their bubble. So if you have an idea of what you're actually setting your patient up for, it, it really speaks volumes. And then once you have some experience with it and you know the effectiveness of the vaccine, that also goes a long way because you're, you're always going to run into somebody who's affected by shingles and I, I focus on this because it's very common right now and the Part D payers are they're all paying for it and so if you have somebody that's on the fence or if it's not covered by their insurance and they're a little bit younger not on Part D yet you know you can give them the stories about how yes it is an effective vaccine I've got a customer that I've given it to and they went on to develop shingles, but guess what? They didn't feel it because they received the vaccine from me two years ago. And so those personable stories go a long way. So those are definitely our best practices and clinical pearls. And I really like to share those with anybody that's interested in, in starting an immunization program because it just speaks volumes for where you can go with it. That's great. And uh, one of the, the programs that you've been using with CPS was related to identifying patients that should be on a statin but are not. Can you talk a little bit about uh, that and then ultimately what you'd like to do with CPS related immunizations? Oh, definitely. Whenever we were first starting with the CPS program, my staff was blown away at how many patients we had missed with our paper and pencil version of trying to identify these diabetic patients. So to have CPS right there, right in your face, tell you who is a diabetic standing in the front of your store was huge. and. I instantly, my mind went to immunizations. I wanted to know who was eligible for a tetanus shot. I wanted to have that pop up to say, hey, here's a 25 year old. They're probably not up to date with tetanus. We can run it through their insurance real fast, see if it's covered, and then have that, uh, that opportunity when they're standing right in the store to say, why don't you get your tetanus shot? You're here right now covered by your insurance or it's X amount of dollars because now you're you're equipped with information. So CPS is that solution that I absolutely see us going to for identifying anybody eligible for certain vaccines. Very cool. And then um, as far as just community pharmacy in general, where do you see the future going? Community pharmacy is going to be clinical com community pharmacy soon enough. You know, it is one of the things that I always start with my, page, my students who come through on rotation is, listen, it is not about that one prescription that you're holding. It is not about that refill that you're about to type through. It is about the patient as a whole. You have to look at the patient as a whole. Not only their medication list, but their, their pricing, what, what's going to come out of their pocket for not only today, but the rest of the year or the upcoming year. So being able to identify patients who are going to be affected by certain disease states or certain drugs, that's where pharmacy is going. And it's, it's hard to change the way a person views the whole profession, but I truly believe in community pharmacy, we are the ones who are with the patient every day or once a month if they're synced. And we are that contact that once they get discharged from the hospital or once they leave their doctor's office, it's on us. It's on us to see them as a patient as a whole. And then for uh, maybe some of the existing customers out there that are working with MPS, PharmaServe customers, or maybe even potential community pharmacy customers that are looking for a partner, you know, how do you think things are going with McKesson, with, with MPS, with PharmaServe? I love PharmaServe. Um, I've had it from the beginning. And like I mentioned earlier, it's so user-friendly. 
between the touch screens and the keyboard shortcuts and I would challenge anybody with any other pharmacy system with a stack of prescriptions, I could fill them faster than you could with PharmaServe. And a lot of people laugh about that, but my students know firsthand that by the time they're done with my rotation, it is really hard for them to go back to their job and use their current pharmacy system, whatever it may be. But with McKesson in general, just in the past few couple years, um, McKesson is listening and McKesson is seeing where pharmacy is going. They want to know what their customers need, which is why we have to be so vocal about it. And I don't take customer surveys lightly. I make sure I sit down and answer them with exactly what is on my mind at that moment because McKesson is listening. And I I see all of the clinical things that have been happening. Um, I see the potential and where it's going. MedSync is just such a breakthrough with PharmaServe specifically. And APS, I didn't even know about APS, but again, McKesson listened. They heard me saying that I was frustrated with Equip, and they let me know that there was a solution out there. So I can't say enough good about McKesson and where it's going, Um, and I'm just proud to be a McKesson customer. Thanks. So it's been a pleasure and an honor talking to Adrian Cervone from Beaver Health Mart. If any of you are in Western Pennsylvania and you're looking for someone to to take care of you and your family, fill your prescriptions, please stop by. It's a phenomenal place. They're very customer centric. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks, Adrian. Thanks for listening to the Pharmacy Podcast Network's coverage of the McKesson Idea Share 2017, recorded live from the Big Easy, New Orleans, Louisiana. This podcast is sponsored by the Pharmacy Technology and Services Division of McKesson, MPTS. Idea Share is about helping pharmacy owners and operators focus on improving their business knowledge, leverage the industry's most effective technologies, and deliver innovative resources needed to improve a pharmacy's performance and maximize profitability. Be sure to listen to all the podcasts from the Idea Share 2017 special series and contact McKesson pharmacy technology and services to learn more about the latest in state-of-the-art technologies and the best software management systems available in pharmacy.